What's up everyone, it's Q from RetroQ Game, and I want to talk about PC hardware in this video. More specifically, why certain parts of PC hardware has become stagnant. Now, this is really all focused on monitors, because let's face it, a lot of people still use old, outdated monitors. Believe it or not, there's a lot of people out there who have good, high-end, powerful graphics cards, like GTX 1080s, 1080Ti's, and Titan XP's, and still use 1080p displays. Now, of course, some of them use like 120 hertz, 144 hertz, or even some of the higher ones, like I think it's 185 and 200 and something which is slightly understandable but at the same time some people are using 1080p 60 frames per second displays with these very powerful graphics cards and a lot of people i've made videos on this before in the past actually but a lot of people actually are very reluctant to upgrade their pc monitor as as an upgrade, but they'll buy a new high-end CPU, a new high-end motherboard, a new high-end GPU, new high-end RAM, basically building a new high-end computer, but won't properly upgrade to an equivalent monitor. Graphics cards nowadays from like the 1080 and the 1080 Ti, these are cards that will easily push games at max settings 1440p at over 100 frames per second. Depending on how well optimized the game is, you might even get 4K 60 frames per second while still maxed out. Those games are few and far between, but overall you're looking at a very high frame rate at 1440p maxed out, or in or around 4K 60 frames per second with them maxed out. As a quick little aside, that's why I currently don't believe in 4K monitors and 4K technology, because at the moment, as it stands, the graphical grunt of CPUs and GPUs just isn't there right now. It's going to be there very, very soon, but it's not there with the 10 series from NVIDIA. And Lord knows it's not there anywhere close with the AMD series of anything. But with all these graphics cards pushing these insane amounts of pixel counts and insane amounts of frames per second with quality settings and quality sliders cranked all the way up to max, why has PC monitor technology become very stagnant? Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's use my monitor as an example. I bought this monitor in about 2014. It's a 1440p monitor, G-Sync, 144 frames per second, or 144 hertz, and has a one millisecond response time. Now, when this monitor was current, this panel essentially didn't exist until this one was created. So as a slight compromise, basically, they had to make a custom-made TN panel for this. Now, I know someone is going to be already leaving a crazy comment in a paragraph or whatever in the comment section below, going, bah, 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 IPS, IPS, blah, 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 blah. In 2014, IPS was shit because you were looking at, if you were getting an extremely high-end panel, you'd be looking at something like 4 or 6 milliseconds. Pretty bad. Granted, the technology has come a long way since then, and now you can get monitors that are IPS panels and are 120, 144 hertz, and still get 1 or 2 milliseconds. So obviously, times have changed. But here we are in 2018, and in the last four years, the amount of improvements we've seen in PC monitor technology is very, very minuscule. This is a G-Sync monitor, like any quality monitor will be nowadays. I mean, hell, G-Sync is probably the best technology NVIDIA have ever created since SLI. Or at least their version of SLI, because I know someone's going to go into the whole voodoo thing. But what it pretty much comes down to is as PC monitors have gone over the years from 2014, 2015, 16, 17, and now 18, all we've really been getting is, well, 4K is still around. 4K was around back then, and 4K is around now. And the amount of pixels in 4K doesn't change. It's not going to be different from what it was four years ago. Granted, four years ago, you were getting a 4K 30Hz monitor. Then you were getting a 4K 60Hz monitor. And now you can get stuff like 4K 120 and 144 hertz monitors, which are completely irrelevant if you ask me, because we, we're still struggling to push 4K 60 frames per second, let alone 4K 120 or 144 frames per second. Now, really, the only noticeable improvement in monitor technology over the last couple of years is the implementation of HDR, high dynamic range. To keep it short and sweet, HDR is a massive improvement in the range of colors that can be displayed, essentially massive amount of increase in contrast. And this is something that does exist in PC monitors. It's just kind of few and far between at the moment. But again, this isn't anything groundbreaking. This isn't anything crazy leap forward in PC monitor technology. 
Let me give you another quick example of why I'm making this video. There's a new series of monitors coming out very soon. And these are very high-end monitors. These are 4K monitors, they are 144Hz monitors, they are G-Sync equipped monitors, and they have HDR. So they're all very high-end monitors. But at the same time, this is essentially stuff that already kind of exists. We're using the same types of panels, or the same types of LCD technology, and we're just all kind of combining them together. And the thing that makes that one especially sickening, let me just use this as a quick comparison. So, first off, my monitor that I mentioned earlier was around 900 euro, brand new, on launch day four years ago. It was the tip top of the line at the time, there was nothing better than it, and it was around 900 euro. Those monitors I just listed, both from Asus and Acer, the 4K 144Hz HDR G-Sync monitors, are now up for pre-order and these are up for pre-order from between depending on the websites you go to to pre-order them 2400 euro and 2900 euro by the way i should mention that the two monitors in question the asus and the acer monitor as well as my own monitor from four years ago are all 27 inch monitors so you're getting a 4K 144 hertz HDR G-Sync still LCD to this day monitor for the best part of three grand. And this is where I think this is bullshit. And this is where it really highlights the fact that it's completely stagnated. Because there's a technology out there that is far far miles ahead of LCD technology. Now someone's already probably wondering, it's like why I'm not mentioning LED technology. Technically LED monitors are actually LCD monitors. The LED is only the backlight behind them. They still use an old school liquid crystal display panel and lit appropriately using the massive amounts of LEDs behind them. So they still have all the drawbacks and flaws of LCD. But we have a technology that completely negates all this. Yes, it's a little bit expensive, but compared to what they're offering in what I can only call a minor and minuscule upgrade, why do we not have OLED monitors yet? We have OLED phones, we have OLED tablets, and we have OLED large screen TVs. So why is no company giving us OLED PC monitors? The technology is there. OLED is vastly superior to any type of LCD or LED. It can offer all the same features. It's got the incredibly low response time. Its contrast ratio is second to none. It supports HDR10 and Dolby HDR vision. You can put a G-Sync module in there. It would completely destroy any other monitor on the market, even a very high-end monitor. Now, of course, OLED does have a big drawback of being expensive, but when you factor in the cost of, say, those 4K 144Hz monitors we were looking at, you could get a 27-inch OLED monitor with maybe similar or lower specs for that kind of money. I would be more than happy to upgrade to an OLED monitor at 1440p, 120 or 144Hz with G-Sync and HDR. I would gladly pay 1200 maybe even €1,500 Euro for that. But that brings me to why I really and truly think that we don't have OLED screens on PCs just yet. And that reason is if we did have those available, people would buy them and people would not need to buy a new monitor at all for six, seven, maybe even 10 years. Like in Intel and Nvidia's world, when there's no competition, they just phone it in and give you incremental upgrades every year or every product line, just like monitors have been doing. Incremental upgrades, every different series, every different line. So maybe you bought a 4K 30 hertz monitor a while back, and then a little bit later you had to upgrade to a 4K 60 hertz monitor. And maybe now you're going to upgrade to a 4K 144 hertz monitor. Or maybe you just want another 4K 60 hertz monitor, but you want to upgrade to one with HDR. Incremental upgrades. Same type of display technology, just with one or two extra features. You might get slightly better color, slightly better response time or whatever, but when you compare an OLED monitor to even a high-end LCD or LED monitor, the quality and performance difference you would get is a massive generational jump ahead. So in my opinion, they just want to sell you incremental upgrades. You could argue it's planned obsolescence, to an extent it is, because let's face it, if you buy a t-shirt that never rips or never gets faded or old, you're never going to need to replace it. A company doesn't get any more of your money. It's the same with PC monitors. If they release an OLED screen, basically nothing they're going to release in the next five, six, seven, eight years is going to compare to it. So I just think that's really unfortunate. With HDR becoming more and more and more of a standard at the minute, 
more and more games supporting it, I would gladly fork out some nice chunk of change for a 1440p, 120-144Hz monitor, HDR, G-Sync, OLED screen. So Asus, give me a nice ROG Swift with all that I just listed, and you have my money. So let me know in the comments section below what your thoughts and opinions are when it comes to the current line and current progress of PC monitor technology. What kind of monitor do you use? What are the features of it? And what would be the minimum spec that you need in a monitor to actually consider upgrading? Would you go from 108060 to 108060 with HDR? Or would you need to go up a resolution as well as G-Sync HDR? What's the deal? Personally, I have no plans to buy any other replacement monitor in the future until we get OLED screens. The rest of it just isn't worth the upgrade to me. Sure, IPS colors are a pretty decent improvement, but they're not 900 euro worth decent, especially when it's still the same type of technology with LCD and LED. And that only calls even further into question what those NVIDIA big format gaming displays are going to be like later this year. They're probably going to be five, six thousand euro plus. Oh, by the way, those monitors I mentioned earlier, the new Asus and Acer ones that are between 24 and 2900 euro, those have been delayed for over a year to make them more cost effective for consumers and are still releasing at this kind of price. Get the fuck out of here. Anyway, let me know all that good stuff in the comments section below. Hit the appropriate button to let me know how I did on the video. While you're at it, even hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Even though YouTube probably still won't sell you all the notifications, you can at least say you tried. Thank you for watching, guys, and I will see you in the rest of the videos in my channel.